Hey, what's up, you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. I am joined by Florian. Hello, Florian. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Uh, this, this is great. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for asking. Thank you so much for coming onto the channel and telling us your story. Um, as you guys might have noticed, uh, Florian is blind. Can I say that blind or is it like... It's the term I tend to use. Like these days when I stream, it's like gamer without sight, coder without sight, but blind works. It's fine. <laughs> and soon to be hacker without sight. I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, the blind hacker is already taken. That's somebody else. So, you know, hacker without sight is, I guess, going to be my new moniker. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it seems really freaking awesome that you, that people are so adaptable to me. Like, can I ask, were you blind from since you were born? Or yeah, you... I've always been. I've always been like this. I was born this way. <laughs> and is it like full blind or? It's like, um, let's say 99.5% blind. I don't see any colors, shapes, or shadows. Really, all I see is a difference between light and dark. So think if there's a lightning strike at a, at a dark night, I can see that difference. But if I'm in a, in, a, in, a, in a lighted room and there's sun shining in, I wouldn't be able if that was the light or the sun uh, generating the light, as it were. It seems <clears throat> like there's a lot of challenges that come with that. Um, you said you did some coding. Can I ask? how that goes, what the process is. So uh, this thing, it's a keyboard and it also gives me braille. And I also have a headphone on my head that tells me a whole bunch of uh, like TTS um, at a really, really high speed. Uh, <clears throat> can I really show, can you quickly show that off? No, not easily, okay. So um, there is essentially a way for me to be able to um, use those two in tandem to be able to read code, figure out where I am in the code base, uh, the code editors and IDEs get more accessible every year. So that helps a lot. For example, uh, lately, like the, you have these squiggles when you do something wrong in the code, there's like a red, red, line, red underline. We didn't have access to that information for the longest time. So we always had to look at the problems panel. And now there's an audio cue that indicates that after me bitching at them for like seven years. So <laughs> that's, <clears throat> that's finally there. And I've been really trying my best to open paths forward for people and, and giving them more tools to be able to code, to be able to do all sorts of things. Hacking is just going to be the new frontier, as it were. I love that. I love that that you're actively engaged in that because like there's a lot of people with accessibility problems. Mm -hmm. I'm developing a website, for example, where you learn how to hack, but I don't always take accessibility as the first thing in mind, which is mm -hmm. really like something that we should take more care of. Are there some general things that you think everybody should take into account? Uh, excuse me. Uh, there is a lot of things that you can do to to keep these things in mind. Particularly, uh, use the tools what they were meant for. For example, um, there used to be a thing, you know, way back when when frameworks weren't a thing, where uh, HTML was your was your structure and your content, CSS was your uh, appearance, and then JavaScript was your behavior. Now that's all gotten mished together. But in that's in back in the day, that was how it worked, and people have forgotten that. So. We have all these really interesting semantic elements uh, like headings, like main, like like uh, header and footer, things like that, that really help assistive technology parse a website and nobody uses them. <laughs> so it's like, <clears throat> it makes it a lot harder to parse a website and quickly get to whatever I need to go. And if you, for example, have a decent heading uh, structure, which is hierarch hierarchical in nature, you essentially have you've made a really good outline for people uh, without sight or blind or whatever, whatever you have to, uh, to navigate your website quickly. And so many people don't do this right, or they use headings to make text larger because, you know, CSS isn't a thing. So <clears throat> it, it becomes a lot harder than it really needs to be. And these simple things like, you know, use the HTML element if you have it, put all text on images, things like that is, is very much HTML 101, like super beginner newbie class HTML. And so many people are just not doing it in 2022, which is super sad. Yeah, and it's totally, it's logical as well to a degree because everybody wants to go faster, faster, faster with their release. <clears throat> and I yep. noticed that the layered design models are not taken into account very well. Not that mm. you imagine it. I don't take some of these things into account myself, like old text on images. I'll have to work on that. That's a definitely a great tip. And uh, the problem is also that a lot of people don't get taught these things. Like I had to teach in the class when I was uh, when I was studying in Arnhem uh, for my uh, informatica for my like a watered down computer science thing that we do here. I taught the class on accessibility and web development because the teacher didn't know enough. 
And if that doesn't tell us how bad we're doing, <laughs> then I don't know what will. Yeah, and also for people that are that are still seeing but less seeing and than most people, it's important that you make the layout a little bit accessible as well. And detailed. yeah, make sure things work with Zoom. Make sure your color contrast is okay, so you don't have like white on white text or something stupid like that. I've actually done that as an April Fool's joke once, where I just like put a whole bunch of white text on a white background, and blind people could still see it because the screen reader doesn't care about CSS, but <laughs> nobody else could read it. Oh my god. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, if you're coding, uh, yeah. like, and you have to make a UI, does that do you make UIs or is it more like backend work? Yeah, it's mostly backend work. Uh, I mean, obviously, we get more and more JavaScript framework and, and a lot of stuff like logic, application logic is moving to the front end. So I've been teaching myself more and more like you know React and Vue.js and things like that. But the actual CSS, I tend to leave to other people. I'm sure it can be learned as a blind person if you have a lot of dedication and time and brain space and lack of life. But I decided this is not what I'm going to be spending the next two years doing um, because I'm not actually able to verify nor admire the work I do in that space. So I decided, no, I will let somebody else do the design stuff and I'll do, I'll do the rest. Yeah, and like it's also, <laughs> you can spend your time better with hacking, of course. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> You said that you were learning to hack that. Can you tell us a little bit about how far you are along in that journey? So uh, last year, back in well, back in 2021, obviously, uh, when the, I think third or fourth or however many lockdown hit, I was um, through a couple of like jumps and, and leaps, uh, given a three month voucher for Try Hack Me. I think I've won one in a raffle or something of that nature. And this had always been like something that interested me, but I was always like, I don't know if the tools are going to be accessible. Can I even do that? And, and I just never really had the impetus to go try. And then I got this voucher. I'm like, you know, what? might as well, might as well give it a go. And then I got further than I ever expected to go. And then I, I started finding out, okay, where are the actual stumbling blocks? What tools aren't accessible? What vendors care about accessibility and what, what are they willing to do to fix things? And that slammed me into a couple brick walls, and it also got me into a couple of really cool communities. For example, uh, the Zeta Tech Proxy to tool, which is like a burp suite alternative. Um, they've been really receptive to my feedback, and I've actually helped them out with a couple of pull requests uh, as well to make a couple of things in the, uh, in the HUD that they have more accessible. And um, as far as, as, as how far I've gotten, essentially, um, it's been an on and off thing. I really would like to like sort of at, at some point make a career switch, but right now I just don't have the money or the resources to do that. So it's it's really something I do when I have the time for it. And it's it's really fun so far. I've gotten, I've done the entire, uh, when this was still a thing on Trihack Me, you had the junior, no, no, not the junior, the complete beginner path. I did all of that. Um, <clears throat> I read some of the, like some of some books. I did some other things. I went to some meetups. Uh, there's a Dutch uh, hack the box meetup that I was a part of for a little while. So yeah, I've, I've been in there. I've been, I've been there. I've been helping other people out with try hack me as well. Cause at times there are challenges that they've done in such a way that you literally can't do them as a blind person, like, you know, draw the flag with CSS or, um, there's the there's the pre cybersecurity path now where you have a couple of really fun little mouse mouse centered mini games where you have to click things into place or like make sure you dra drag lines from one place to another yeah that's not accessible so um, I've ha helped a couple of people pass those to still be able to learn what they can from that path and and that's been really like um, educational and valuable for me so yeah it's it's definitely something I'd like to do more in uh, and if I'm given the chance I'll definitely do that. That's awesome. So, like, if there, if you check with CSRF issues, for example, you literally have the source code read from the text to speech to you, so you can see token is here and token has this value, and you hear like e two four eight. Yeah, I tend to like use my braille display for that because, of course, if it's a super long hexadecimal string, that's just ugh to listen to with the TTS. But um, yeah, can I super quickly show? Yeah, I can quickly show, quickly show that off what that would sound like. Uh, it would sound kind of sort of like this. Uh, hang on. Close this up because something is making noise. I can just go here and press this. Something like that. <laughs> okay, now give me like an hour to to slow that down. <laughs> 
yeah. that was essentially my speech to sort of say, I was just essentially all tapping through the couple of windows that I had opened. So it said a couple of times that I was near this window and it said uh, the post and oh, the post attendee Zoom thing that came up in my browser and then uh, our Discord. So that was me sort of just flipping between those windows a couple of times. <laughs> Don't normal conversations get boring when you listen to everything in telex speak? <laughs> uh, sometimes, depending on how long people, how slow people speak. Uh, particularly, video courses are fun because I have to like slow, speed them up to two, two point five speeds to not fall asleep um, <laughs> a lot of the time. Um, and and I just go faster that way, and then sometimes I have to slow them down again. It's 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 really fun. It's uh, it's something you get used to as well. <laughs> I'm thinking about how I can make my labs more accessible for people who have less sight, for example. I have your uh, CNWP stuff, so I'll probably find out. I look forward to that. I look forward to hearing you from you on that specifically because <laughs> that is one of the big parts for me is practicals, 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 of course, and that doesn't mm -hmm. seem as practical. <laughs> Not like yes. scripting, if there are a lot of filters in place. Well, it, it seems possible. It definitely does. Because if you have like something that filters out alert, you send a text string, you see that the text string gets filtered out, you send another text string, and suddenly your text to speech reads out an alert, and then you have a pop up. Yeah, pretty much. Like, uh, obviously, the text to speech, the screen reader, like reads every application on the computer. So if I'm sending text strings and I'm looking at the web page, like I'm doing it from the DevTools or wherever. Or I'm using some kind of fuzzing script, then yeah, it would it would show me the alert. So I would say, okay, that didn't get filtered out. I can use this, and then you can just work from there. So yeah, that's freaking awesome. If you ever need any help, of course, on the exam, feel free to let me know. The same goes for everybody who has that certificate. Um, I'll be sending out a link to the Discord, and we'll be starting the live lessons next week again. Cool. Uh, every week we'll have like one live lesson of four hours, so we'll go over the material in a couple of weeks. Um, I think it's very useful to actually go over that because like what I find amusing in this case is that you have a lot of chances to pick out the stuff that other people will miss from my exam. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll put stuff in the NDAs like that, that's really messed up uh, and a lot of people miss it because they don't really read the NDA. <laughs> like you have to have it read for you and you hear all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to read it all. Yeah. Also, the interesting thing that our brains do when you see a word that's like that's spelled right in the beginning and the end, but like it's jumbled in the middle. I will see that right away, but a lot of brains sort of compensate and just give you the word and you don't see the spelling mistakes. So that's also a lot of things that uh, that helps a lot if you do read word by word. We had a, we don't really pattern match the same way that that sighted brains as it were do. So that's that's interesting as well. Yeah, that's really interesting to think about. It's really it's something else because like I can't imagine living without my sight. All I can imagine is closing my eyes and not seeing anything. But I, I imagine that's not what being blind is. I, I imagine it's experiencing the world in a totally different way. It's it's a very difficult thing for me to explain as well because I don't have your frame of reference either. So it's like uh yeah you don't know what it is to see uh, what to not see, but I don't know what it is to see. So we're sort of both at that divide. We're trying to bridge it and sort of match our experiences and, and see if they can match up somehow, which is, uh, yeah, interesting. Can I just say that it's really freaking inspirational how far you've come and that you've put so much effort into this. And I just hope that anybody who is uh, who is blind or, or who sees less in the audience sees this as an inspiration and that they don't think that they have to be stopped by anything. That's really why I do it. Like a lot of the times, like obviously this is really interesting to me and I love, I love the, the, all the things. It's really fun for me to dig into these things. And I've been reading hacker, hacker books since I was like 14, 15 ish. And I just, everything I got my little hands on, but a lot of the things I've been doing, I've been contributing to VS Code. I've been contributing to this, uh, Z Attack Proxy. I've been I've been doing all these things. Really, what I'm trying to do is is enable people, give people the tools to do the things they thought they wouldn't be able to do. That's also why my Twitch exists. It's like shows me off playing games. It shows me off coding. It shows me off heck doing try hack me challenges. I've done that once. Um, just just to show, look, this is possible on the one hand, but also we're here pay attention to us, make sure we don't have to go through all these hoops I'm showing off. So it's it's really that in a lot of respects. Yeah, and to a degree, I don't know if you wear sunglasses in public, 
but it can be invisible to the people around you as well. I don't know, do you have a, a service dog with you? I do have a service dog, he's downstairs. <laughs> um, I do not wear sunglasses in public unless it's like really sunny out, because the, the, I, have all the, I have all the cons of being able to see, but not really any of the pros. So, you know, if I stare into the sun for too long, I may not be realizing I'm doing that and I'll have a <laughs> headache at the end of the day. But um, yeah, I, I do see, uh, like if the sun's particularly bright out, I do see, I do notice that as like a, an, an unpleasant sensation in my eyes, but it's not really something I can really give a name to. And just by experience, I now know that's probably the sun. I need to wear sunglasses, but it's, it's really just a, a matter of learning what things are and where this sensation is coming from. It's not pattern matching based on visual imagery as it were. And if you are outside with your dog, what would you tell somebody who would like to come to the dog and pet them? Uh, don't. <laughs> uh, essentially, what what the way that works is if a dog is wearing his dog harness, like his, his little uh, equipment, then he should not be petted because he's at work. And that could actually be a safety hazard for both the dog and the uh, handler. If he's not wearing the the harness, which will happen, for example, when you know the handler is sitting down in a train or they're in a park together just playing or whatever, then you can pet him as much as you like. I mean, still good to ask, but you can. Just if he's wearing that harness, just don't. It's it's really distracting. It's actually a very annoying thing to do. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Well, sorry, I didn't mean that. Fun. You're cool. I make blind jokes pretty much five times a second, so you're completely fine. <laughs> That's awesome. You seem to be handling it really well. Mm. I'm going to be honest, I have uh, chronic pain. I don't handle it as well as you. I cry a lot. I hit the wall in, in frustration. That seriously I, sounds like a pain, man. Yeah, it is, but I can imagine. I, I, for me, it seems even worse to not have my sight because I, I'm used to my sight. I know what it is. And that's the thing, right? Like if you go blind, that's very, very different to being blind from, from the beginning. For me, this is the normal. For me, this is this is how it's always been. So I'm not missing what you're what you're having. If I were to, for example, go deaf, I'd probably have a, a, a way harder time with that, even, even if I was seeing, because you, you, you're you losing a, a sense. It's very similar to losing a limb, in a sense. Yeah, and, and for me, my eyesight seems one of my worst things to lose, because like that's how I navigate the world, but you've gotten used to other ways of navigation. Well, if you, if you practice with that little sample I gave you earlier, you can use CTS, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I really love that, that it's so fast. Like, yeah. Do you ever get lost? Oh, all the time. How do you get home? <laughs> I use GPS generally, or I ask. But yeah, this was, this was a big thing. We, we learned we, we learned routes by road a lot of the time. So like, you know, go left here, follow this thing. If you if you lose whatever route we're teaching you, you're essentially hosed. But um, with the advent of smartphone technology and like GPS and things like that, there's a lot more things we can do now to sort of reorient ourselves when we get lost. And that's made the whole, oh no, the, the, the panic of, no, I'm getting lost. How am I going to get home? A lot less. Like that certainly happened when I was in college, for example, I would certainly be like, oh shit, I have no idea where I am, <laughs> how to get home. And that, that is pretty scary because at that point, you, you know, you're, you're far away from your safe haven and you have no immediate way to get back there. So like at that point, you start having to ask um, questions of people and there have been moments I had one this one experience where I was in a flat I lived in a flat and there was this other flat building literally right next to it, it had a different street name but it was the same it's very same same building except some things were like flipped around so I ask a person if this is the right building they say yes I go in my key doesn't work I go in anyway because someone opens the door for me the railing of the stairs is on the other side of the stairs. I'm like, I mean, did I just enter a different universe? What's going on here? Oh, uh, it turned out that I was like just one building too far. But yeah, just like figuring that out and like looking at my GPS and like, oh, yeah, this is not the right square. Yeah. It's yeah, just no, a strange, no. strange experience. We're like, wait, wait, what? This is, is this the Marvel universe now? What's happening? <laughs> oh my God, that's so strange. That's such a foreign concept to me. Uh, of course, yeah. I get lost as well. I get lost probably more often than you do. <laughs> I'm really bad at navigation. Hmm. Like, uh, <laughs> can a blind person, for example, just on, on a track, with a person who guides them ever like drive a car just to experience that and stuff like that or is uh, that people have done that yeah and there's even a veteran who went blind who apparently broke the record of uh, fastest motorcycle uh, track 
Don't ask me how he did it. I wouldn't know, and I would never do this either, but I, apparently he did it. I'm not sure it, it was a thing on the news this week. But yeah, I've seen people drive cars um, with essentially a sighted person telling them where to steer. And often it was like a, you know, a teaching car, so they could hit the brakes if things were going to go really bad. But yeah, it, it did happen. And there have even in the Netherlands here been um, exposés where you had like a big parking lot with nothing in it where blind people could have the experience of, of driving a car just for like a, a couple of meters, not too far, but still just get that experience in, which is really cool. And uh, I've done it once. It was quite fun. That's awesome. I've so even steered a plane once. <laughs> what? Jesus I mean, you know, awesome. on the one hand, you know, you're not really all that much you can run into up, uh, up at like yeah. three kilometers high. But still, yeah, only for a little while, though. I didn't get to land it, unfortunately. <laughs> that would have been cool. <laughs> to for blind person to land a plane. <laughs> awesome. Like, it's It'd be like, uh, Papa Tango, do you have a visual? No, not really. <laughs> oh my God. I'm still yeah. a streamer. I still get to do these things. <laughs> yeah. That's true. By the way, I'll put your socials in the description below if anybody wants to check them out. And oh, I'll... yeah, totally. Go for, go ahead. Yeah, they're in the, there's a link, there's a link tree. There's a link tree that I made yesterday when I saw you post it. It's really useful that Linktree thing because you can just update one place. I was amazed. Linktree, like this is this is like one of those things that never happens. But Linktree actually has accessible keyboard-based drag and drop for your links, and I've never seen that literally ever. Oh, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Like, yeah, I think that it's really hard for like I think that's for example, the world sometimes has a hard time taking people who have autism out into account, people who have ADHD. Mm. Um, especially like blind people, because that's something that on a day-to-day -day basis, people who are not blind almost never think about that. But like, yeah, recently, true. I found out the meaning of those uh, tactile tiles in front of the um, traffic lights. Yeah, really cool. they indicate stop here. There's something important happening. Yeah, and they're yeah. also in front of bus stops a lot of the time, or sometimes there's entire roads of them near taking you to the closest followable uh, shoreline, as they are called. So that's why sometimes they run straight into a wall. That's actually by design. The idea is that you then follow the wall forwards. <laughs> it's not that you smash your face in the wall. Yeah, if you have a stick as well, right? Yeah, I have a cane. Yeah, if, if I were to like not have my dog with me, because at that point you don't use them as much, but if you do have a cane and you use that to walk around, then yeah, those uh, tactile things are pretty useful sometimes. You feel them under your feet as well, but they're like more meant for cane users. Particularly on uh, train stations, you see them a lot. And do you have like, um, do you have like any other um, health complications that come with the problem, or is it like? Do no, that's that's. I'm I'm glad. I'm I'm fortunate to only, to only have uh, have this issue as for so far. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine it's already bad enough. Yeah, early. I mean, I'm thirty. It, it could still happen, but you know. <laughs> yeah, and let's hope you don't run under a bus. That'd be sad. <laughs> bad joke. Bad joke. No, that would totally be sad. I totally see it with the people, with the way some people are driving in this country. I mean, hey. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't surprise me either. Jesus. Like the whole like raising your cane sort of upwards towards your shoulder in a sense, like, hey, I'm going. Can you not squash me with your car? Is like not a universal sign. A lot of people don't know that you should stop when that happens. Yeah, and like I imagine that people can act strange around you, right? Just because you're blind. Or... Oh yeah, absolutely. Discrimination, like uh, underestimation, all these things happen all the time. It's it's just part of the course, unfortunately. Particularly when you're like <clears throat> the person bitching about accessibility about a certain product, you get anywhere from oh yeah, we'll definitely fix it to how do you even turn the computer on? Like it's it's really like a very like big sliding scale. Um, yeah. And then there's also a lot of promises that may or may not get like, for example, Port Twigger is, is a company I've been bashing back and forth with for a couple of years now. And I was like, they're always like, hey, we're going to like look into this. And then like half a year later, I'm like, hey, how's it going? And they're like, yeah, we didn't get to it yet. And like, yeah, I figured. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to bash so, yeah. too hard, but I have some beef with them as well. Oh, dear. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm leaning more and more towards Zap every single day. And if you guys want, they have a free Zap course. I'll put it in the description as well. It'll help you get started with it. Because Zap has like a different uh, idea behind it than Burp Suite. The whole um, the whole well concept is basically different. 
you don't start with like your scope well you do start with your scope but you set it differently in your context and stuff like that yeah it's a fun tool i've uh <clears throat> i've been i've been happy enough to work on it a little bit in my free time and it's been fun to do that so that's awesome thank you very much because then you have been helping me out <laughs> you're welcome indirectly it's awesome how interconnected our little world is of security oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it's good that they have that so high into their minds as well that that the accessibility i uh they the... do they don't really know how to do it a lot of them they're just like you know tell us what to change and we'll change it because we don't know like and that's fair that's completely understandable like i said this this stuff doesn't get taught nobody teaches this stuff so it's like if i can help just by like providing you know, this is why it's broken and this is what you do to fix it. And then I'll happily do that. It's no skin off my back to do that. And if I can do that for anyone who's watching right now, I'd be happy to help, you know, be, I wouldn't mind if you toss some money my way for doing it, but hey, I'd, I'd be willing to help open source projects out as well. So it's like, let me know. I think that's the least that people can do. And I think that this should be at least be approached. I, I'm going to approach you definitely because I want my website to be accessible for everybody. And cool. I know that it's not something that I can do in a day, but it's definitely something I want to work on and do it as fast as possible, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, makes sense. I think that I worked <laughs> at a theme park and people who had a handicap or a disadvantage, they were given, for example, uh, a, a priority pass and they could go through the exit. And every time that happened, the people that would normally sit in that row were complaining and moaning and like bitching and like, oh, we were going next, blah, blah, blah. And like these people already have a disadvantage. Don't make it worse for them. But yeah, <laughs> that's an interesting one. We're we're always the, the, the you know, people uh, quote fucking it up, quote for other people, essentially. And it's just like, ugh, come on. Like it's, it's the same with, and I'll, I'll, I'll not get too much into this, but it's the same with the whole, you know, coronavirus, we can go to parties thing. And that's, that's a big tragedy thing that happened like two years ago, where I'm just like, that's, that's your priority. That's, that's what, that's what you're going to decide to focus on for the, for your day. I agree. It's yeah. an interesting, uh, it's an interesting thing to see humans at their best. <clears throat> we are not selfish at all. At all. Yeah. No. no, not at all. All right. Anyway, I really appreciate your time, my friend. Uh, if anybody has any more questions for Florian, I'll put his uh, his um, socials in the description below and go watch it stream sometimes because I'm going to find it really interesting. Uh, it's something that I don't normally get into contact with and I, I hope that we can work together in the future for making our products better as well for accessibility. Yeah, be happy to. That sounds great. It was great meeting you. And if you guys want, uh, Florian and I met in a group for Belgium and Dutch hackers. So if you want, we'll put the link in the description below. But please only join if you're from Belgium or the Netherlands. And it's just to form like a local group. So we'd really appreciate that. Thanks a lot, Florian, for your time and for coming out here. Once again, much respect for doing everything what you do and showing everybody that no boundary is there forever that we can break everything if we want to and hacking is all about smashing shit so oh hope... yeah let's hack the world <laughs> there you go hope you get to smash a lot of shit in the future <laughs> let's hope so i just hope it's not my shit <laughs> <laughs> watching i'll see you later guys bye bye amazing hackers bye